Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome, for the first time, actress Katie Ellis. It's me! What's up? <laughs> What's up? Thanks for coming by. Th- thanks for having me. You know, Jason's already been here, mm-hmm. and then we mentioned outside our, our home, our mutual homie. Yeah, Malice. Malice, Alice Malice, the mm-hmm. homie. Yeah, and um, that's how I first met you. Uh, me and my neighbor Craig were helping her with the movie review show. Yeah, we were doing Gummo, yeah. one of my favorite movies. Harmony Corinne? Yes. Yeah, uh, what, what are your thoughts on, um, on his movies? In general? Yeah, that I, one was a bit bizarre. It, you know, I was 16 when I was shown that movie. Um, mm-hmm. by my boss at the time randomly why did your boss show you that movie? um i was working at a fish processing oh. plant <laughs> in alaska okay, so okay yeah well, well we're gonna get to that <laughs> yeah. yeah we're gonna talk about alaska so he showed me the movie in his trailer it's not as creepy as it sounds mm-hmm. at the time now looking back maybe no it wasn't it wasn't yeah. creepy but um yeah i mean great soundtrack like mm-hmm. really disturbing imagery but like it showed me a kind of a movie that could evoke different feelings than just your regular like rom-com or like action movie yeah yeah it was a little more artful are you into uh todd solin's movies uh welcome to the dollhouse yeah and happiness oh god happiness so let's let's plug that i mean that's that was <laughs> that's a movie no you can't find it anywhere online no you have to get it somewhere like, i have it on dvd you do somewhere yeah it's one of my favorite movies which is kind of fucked up i know but yeah um, now, uh, rest in peace, Philip Seymour Hoffman as well, because yeah. his character was bizarre. He was my favorite. Like, I'm going to fuck you so hard and hard you'll come out your ears. Yeah, yeah. That whole thing. So he, his his character was just, he was a quiet office guy. Yeah. Loner. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess people would call him an incel. Nowadays, the word would be incel. Yeah. Or something like that. Right. And uh, and no, no the, mo- the more disturbing character is the father. Oh, the father was the worst. The, yeah. like, closet pedophile. Yeah, 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 yeah. The father horrible. was, he was horrible. But, yeah. And then Welcome to the Dollhouse was just a masterpiece mm-hmm. i mean i i own that on itunes yeah i'm gonna rape you after school <laughs> that whole thing <laughs> or, or just oh, oh yeah there's that 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 one character right mm-hmm. I've, I've um god and then the 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 actress the the main character in that uh uh wiener dog wiener, wiener dog yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 she was so good um and then I like the the name of the band of her, uh, you know, her nerdy brother's band, uh, the Quadratics. Oh man, I do you totally, remember? They I would totally practice. forgot that. But yeah, the so Quadratics. The main character, um, Wiener Dog, her um, older brother had a band, in they practice in the garage. Yeah. And there, I think there's an Asian guy in the band too. There's nice. one Asian guy. <laughs> yeah, no, they're called the Quadratics, and I've always thought that that was an awesome name for uh, a, a band. I mean, it's highly mathematical. The first math metal, yeah. really. Um, and then um, I'm borrowing this from my neighbor as well because uh, I I just saw Rocky, but uh, this hits home, doesn't it? Because you mentioned something about this. Yeah, this l- is the Rocky bit. uh <laughs> box set of uh, Rocky. It's just all of them. They don't. There's make, there's so many. And they don't make movies like this anymore, do they? They don't. They don't. Not in my opinion, at least. And then you and Jason said uh, you mentioned. Go ahead, tell the story during quarantine or. Oh something. Yeah. yeah, during quarantine, like I love um, marathoning things, and mm-hmm. like obviously we were getting really bored, so we watched all the Rockies, we watched all the Rambo's, like we really stalloned our asses off. But mm-hmm. these ones just get really funny, mm-hmm. like Drago. Oh, I, that's Rocky Four. Yeah. <laughs> so I just watched Rocky Two last night. Uh, when First my di- time ever? No. no. Okay, just checking because I mean, you were like, because me, it, 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 uh, rest in peace, Dad. Um, but uh, when my dad was in the nursing home, I uh, watched uh, Rocky in the um, in the the nursing home Aww. with him when he was kind of out of it. I would, uh, you know, 
bring these movies. I was watching, I actually watched Rocky Two in there, <laughs> but I had to rewatch it because this is the this is the movie where the first one they had a draw. Mm-hmm. Remember, so they had to draw the first match, right? And so Rocky Two is a continuation of. Well, let's see who really won. Who's the real? You know, it's right. like the rematch, right? And so it's the cli- uh, The climax of the movie is when, at the very end, they punch each other out and they both fall to the ground and they both knock each o- other out. Do you remember that? You know, the fucked up part is I don't remember that. I'm mm-hmm. really bad at retaining yeah. like a lot of movie stuff, but I watch a lot of MMA, like UFC. Oh, you found? Fa- oh, we're gonna get back to that. Love, too. yeah, love mixed martial arts in general but i every every time there's a fight i'm like double knockout double knockout because i just want to see it one time that's rocky too double knockout and then <laughs> rocky wins at the end because he stands up yeah he that's a, right Apollo. yeah at the end Uh-oh. jason it's my pump, cat pump alarm <laughs> gotta give my cat a pill oh i want to i want to we're gonna kind of talk about you know how y'all met and stuff yeah too. um and do you remember mr t and rocky three? Oh, clubber yeah. lang yeah clubber Lang. yeah yeah clubber. And then Ivan Drago's in Rocky IV. So mm-hmm. you, y'all you watched all these. Yes. Yes, we did. It's been a couple of years now. Yeah, but, but it, it's kind of end. Uh, Rocky V, I don't even remember. I, Rocky IV was the last one that hit home for me. Yeah. I kind of lost. Uh, there's a, the character. Oh, Tommy Gunn. Mm-hmm. You know, where he trains. He's kind of like it's when he retires. Rocky Balboa retires and he trains Tommy Gunn, his uh, whatever, protege. Protege, yeah. yeah. So, but then after that, I just, you know, it's the same thing with Rambo. You know, there's First Blood, there's Rambo 2, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, then, then yeah. You kind of like, you're like, okay, this is, ge- it's getting weird yeah. a little bit. But you know what? It, I got, it got me back. <laughs> Honestly, the last Rambo movie mm-hmm. was so good. No, can we plug that a little bit? Because uh, yeah. there is a Rambo, is that Rambo 5? Where's the one where he goes to Thailand or he's he's a snake trainer? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. I don't remember what number it is. But there's one after that where the the Mexican cartel is involved. Did did you know that? (laughs) I've seen them all. Yeah. But there's one after the the one where he moves to Asia. Yeah. God, what happened in that one? I I barely remember. I've never seen that one. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, no, no. no. I think it was on Netflix. I think it's on either Tubi or Netflix or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fuck, I wonder if I didn't even see that one and it's all just a blur. But the one where he's in Thailand and like a snake trainer and like some Christians are coming. To- yeah, <laughs> like, I love it so and then much. He he he, he, uh, he takes the boat down river. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the Christian ministry, he takes them in and drops them off, and then like they don't come back, and who's yeah. gonna save them? And it's kind of like he's retired. He doesn't. He's not gonna uh, go back to violence or right. But then he's kind of. Oh, I remember what part there was. Uh, those. Um, those dudes in the boat and they're and they 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 kind of like interrogate them in the on the river yeah and then the the there's one female passenger and he's like I, 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 I. and then he, he <laughs> got, i'm sorry I get that. <laughs> but he goes get you know get get up and then he's like grab bring the female yeah to us mm-hmm. and then that's when rambo had to put his foot down and all hell breaks loose. that's when the christians got to know like shit got real yeah. in that moment they and were it, like, oh, wow, this is real violence. Yeah, there was also a game they played with the landmines. Remember, they had to walk across the field. Oh, the, the like, rice, field? rice patties. Yeah. yeah so yeah, fucked yeah. up. They just take these whole towns and they're like, go on. You can run to freedom that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, while they're, they're blowing up left and right. Yeah, I, you got to respect the Southeast Asians. I mean, there's yeah. um, I, there's a, a, a just a random documentary. I, saw. I just went to Arizona to visit my mom and I was on YouTube. And there's have you seen... um. A documentary called uh, "My Crazy Life." No, it's about a Samoan. It's about S- a Samoan gangs, but in the '90s or hmm. late '80s, I think they're called SOS, uh, Sons of Samoa. That's so sick. But dude, but they 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 speak like Lokes, like like OG Lokes. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like Cholo. Yeah, no, 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 more like Crips. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's a whole doc. Have you seen? It's it's, it's pretty. It's Sounds pretty kick-ass. insane. Yeah. So it's called uh, My Crazy Life Whoa. on YouTube. If you look it up on YouTube, the whole movie's on there. Yeah. But it's it's really bizarre. I mean, it's one of those things, uh, factions that I didn't know existed. Yeah. It made me think of that because I thought of Rambo, uh, you know, Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of scene reminds... Have you seen Deer Hunter? Not for R- a really long time. But you remember 
Christopher Walken and Robert De Niro, that scene where they're playing Russian roulette. So vaguely. Uh, yeah. Vaguely. But kind of, they're, they're, basically, they're crazy. You yeah. don't want to mess around with that. That's crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, in those movies, they're crazy. I don't know. I've that. always been told that Samoans, um, just like Islanders in general, are very tough. Like, hard, I mean, to, hard to knock out. Well, they're, like, you said fighting. I mean, skulls, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, yeah, they're, thick. they're, they're thick boys. They're thick. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there was a rap group called the Booyah Tribe. In the 90s. Yes. And they were all Samoan guys. Oh, my God. The Booyah Tribe. Do you remember the Booyah Tribe? So big. Yeah. What was the other one? How Bizarre. How Bizarre. Uh, uh, Do you remember that guy? Uh, I don't, what, what was his name? Every time I look around. Oh, uh, wait. Did you know? I don't remember his name uh, either. I'm, t- I'm telling you. I'm very what bad. What was the name of the song? How Bizarre. How Bizarre? Yeah. Okay, look up How Is Bizarre. Is that not? OMC? Yes. What? OMC. OMC. Mm-hmm. So shout out to OMC. Yeah, uh, shout out. Was that one the one hit song? Yeah. Okay. I, c- I couldn't name another one. Um, there's there's another one. Lean like a cholo. Oh, I love that yeah. song. <laughs> what was that guy's name? But that's <laughs> a one hit guy. Yeah. Yeah, lean, exactly. Lean like a cholo. And I'm glad those songs exist, but like I have no idea where those people are now. Um. <laughs> so what was the who's <laughs> the lean with the cholo guy? Please look that up. Lean with a cholo. No, lean like a cholo. Lean like a cholo. Front to back. Yeah. Um, So I play video games with my. uh, So shout out to Shooter and CJ. They're from Texas. And was. Down, so shout out to Down AK Kilo. Um, my the guys I play Warzone with, I play video games. Mm. They actually got in a fight with them at a club in, somewhere in Texas. No way. <laughs> dude, that's what they said. They go, dude, we messed him up. Yeah, they said, right. They said he's a short, he's a short, chubbier fella. Yeah, but those guys no, are still tough. Uh, no, 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 no. They said they whooped him good. Oh, okay. But that's just I don't. That's on their word. Okay. But so I don't know if that's true. We're gonna have to yeah f- fact check that. Mm-hmm. Um. Now you mentioned MMA. How did you get into M- like who are some of your favorite fighters and oh man favorite fighters now mm-hmm. the Darren Elkins the mm-hmm. damage I'm mm-hmm. a big fan what about female fighters female fighters right now I love Rose Nami Yunus I, I, I know I know I started Dude, watching I her you were gonna say that. ultimate fighter series like that's when I fell in love with her like spirit when she was talking about like her sexual abuse and you know, working past your trauma, and you could just tell that she's like yeah. burning with suffering and pain. Well, even when she won the belt, she said, "It's." You remember Joe Rogan interviewed her, and she didn't make it about herself. Yeah, she said, "I'm just a regular person like y'all. Mm-hmm. Just try to treat people good." Or so. Yeah. She had a cool message. She you know? does. She's like humble, a humble warrior. Yeah. And like, she's like builds earth ships and stuff. Yeah. Like she just seems very cool. Cool. And not only like that, her. you could tell like even old Rose, like she had longer hair. You're like, yeah. oh dude, she's, you know, she's an attractive woman. She's beautiful. But she still try like she, sh- she's like, forget that I'm shaving my head. Yeah. And, it gets in the way when you're training. Yeah. And she's just like, I'm just, you know, I'm just, mm-hmm. and she's highly skilled as well fuck yeah she did is. you see the yoana fight her and yoana oh my god do you remember that fight it was insane that fight. the boogie woman is coming for you, you i know, know. <laughs> it sucks because i love yoana but like the shtick that she was leaning into when she had like defended her belt a few times she's like oh i'm so scary but she I'm was coming unbeatable for, for how long no one could quite beat a while her. yeah she, no one could be she her. Had Who- defended it for for i don't five know how many years? times yeah like a five long years, time yeah and then Holy shit! But but did you see the? <laughs> did you say the um bef- uh, up until the, the 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 fight like the psychological stuff she was doing to Rose? Yeah, with the boogeyman shit. Yeah. It was cringy. And didn't she? she <laughs> it was cringy. I love her, but it was like, girl. Do you like her um re- uh, octagon antics? Like you know, she was doing some weird stuff with the, when they announced them, and like she was oh like, her wiggling and yeah. yeah, and then she would go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then like oh 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 the face off. Yeah, she but, gets very intense. Right. And I get that though too, because you want like to get in your opponent's head and like make them second guess themselves. But there's different ways to go about that. So do you think? Because you know, like obviously, I've never been in an octagon, but there's. Do you think that it's half of it psychology, like getting in the opponent's head? I wouldn't say half of it. It's got to be a factor for sure. At least a certain percentage. Though, yeah. Maybe like 15, 10% of because it has to be. Yeah, definitely. Because I used to wrestle and I know that if I was right psychologically, I could have performed. Yeah. But it was all in my head because I had all the skills. Mm-hmm. But when I got to the big show, I like froze. 
that's what I'm talking about because it's in your head. Yeah, most definitely. You've got to yeah. have your head right. That's why it's important to have like the right people around you mm-hmm. and like do everything that you possibly can to maintain like the physical and the mental. Right. It's, just, it's certainly both. Like um, Amanda Nunes. That's my other favorite female um, fighter. Shout out to the lioness. Shout out to the lioness. Um, she retained um, her uh, Juliana. She Pena. She, yeah, Pena had a good. That first match was amazing. It was amazing, but I mean, she did it at least one that night. That was her night. It was her night, but and but, she, she looked great. But Amanda took that belt right back. So, what do you think after her first loss uh, in a while? Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda's first loss when she lost the belt. What yeah. do you think happened to her psychologically? Well, I think I think it was physical because she had had COVID before, like right before the fight. She had an injury too. I think. I th- yeah, I think she did have some kind of an injury mm-hmm. as well. But mm-hmm. the COVID thing, I think, was like really draining on her gas tank. Because, mm. like, she didn't have enough energy to beat her. And so it's, like, when she got a full camp, no illnesses, like, you saw, she dominated her. Well. I mean, it, it did go, it did go a long it time. Would go fi- but, but she meant for it to go five rounds. Or so she says. She's like, I wanted to let everyone know I'm better than her. Right. Yeah. But some people would argue that you could demonstrate that by knocking her out. Also. Yeah, but, the, but then someone, I think, at the press conference after that, and she's like, no, because when, when uh, I guess this is from a fighter's point of view, mm-hmm. when you knock someone out, it could be by chance. That's true. Like a lucky A hit. lucky punch. Yeah, a lucky yeah. punch. But if you beat someone soundly for five full rounds yeah that's that means you beat that person you take their spirit you know yeah it must have drained her <laughs> yeah okay just so get taken down over, over and, and over. over oh yeah because she did throw in the takedowns didn't she? yeah but another thing that i because i was paying attention like after she got before she was going to other places to train but mm-hmm. then after she had lost she got her own gym Oh no shit! Yeah. Okay. So she's like, forget, forget that. I'm revamping my camp. I'm gonna have my own gym. Yeah. Um. Not only that, she switched. Uh, I think to Southpaw. She, she switched stances on um Juliana. Okay. To like, uh, you know how she was hitting her with the right hook. Yeah. So that probably messed her up. Because she was used because she probably didn't train for that. No, no. Juliana just tr- like just kept to the same game plan. Yeah. Amanda. She switched it up. As a dyslexic, I can say that would really fuck me up if yeah. somebody started oh, switch- like switching on me. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. She's fighting in a different way. How do I? Ugh. Yeah. Because it's so much processing. Like, if something comes this way, I need to move this way and anticipate this. Like, it's, yeah, and it's, it's a like whole chess. Different, it's like skateboarding switch stance. It's like the opposite stance of your yeah. normal stance or yeah. something like that. Now, did you remember uh, Amanda vs. Cyborg? I think I might have been at that fight, actually. You, you actually have been to a live UFC event? I've been to a few. Like, Write that down. <laughs> I've okay. been to a few. I haven't. I've never been. Oh, my God. Jason. Now, what's the... Yeah, so shout out to our boy, Jason, Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis. I want to I kind of touch upon that, how y'all linked up mm-hmm. and met and everything, but go ahead. Oh, for sure. Well, he, um, him and Dana White were, you know, friends or whatever, so... He's friends with Dana White? Every now and then... We would get hooked up with some fucking sick floor seats. So the How close o- to the octagon. Uh, the closest I've been, I think, was like one one or two rows back, but like right there. Like there's definitely, I think it was a Ronda Rousey fight where like you can see me and Jason in the background going like, oh, yeah. making some kind of stupid reactionary face. But yeah, Poor real, Ronda, I, real close. She was, she was, she was it for a while. She had a that she had a great run. Well, she's a legend, though, you know. Do you think if Ronda didn't exist, then none of the, like you know all these fighter female fighters wouldn't be around? Because she really kind of great question. Led the way. She, right, did. she was the, you know, she was. She's a trailblazer. Y- exactly for women in MMA. Yeah. I mean, there was women's MMA, but it was never a part of the UFC on that scale. Like she was on covers of magazines. Oh yeah, and movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So what's the energy like? When you're watching it at home versus actually being at the event, like, can you feel the adrenaline? Oh, yeah. It's way different. And you can you can hear like when you're especially when you're that close, you like what? you can hear the the like impact of the punches. Yeah. And you can see the blood and the sweat oh and hear the heavy breathing. Gosh. And it's, it's just, you know, there's such a disconnect when you watch anything on TV. Right. right like you watch right. someone get shot like you're like, oh, it's terrible. But it's on TV. If someone got shot in front of you. 
oh my fucking god oh you know? right right like the you're violence right. is much more real it's real yeah you're like oh that would hurt so it's n- very very noticeable the differences yeah you're like whoa th- i felt that punch yeah fuck yeah Woo-hoo-hoo. and we we go if if we get tickets so, so lucky jason to get tickets. hook the homie up yeah. man you know <laughs> You know, I've, you know, you're always welcome here, Jason. Mm-hmm, we had a great mm-hmm. time. You know, although he was kind of shaming my apartment a little he bit, was. like a little bit. Oh, he did come yeah. home and tell me about it. He's like, it was so small. <laughs> Wait, oh Jason said that because <laughs> he didn't know what he was walking into. Yeah, he even he even made an announcement to my brother. He's like, mate, hook your brother up, mate. Yeah. Look where he's, mate, look where he's living, mate. <laughs> it's oh. like, you know what I mean. That's I've Hollywood, lived here 18 though. years. No shit. I haven't moved because of rent control. Oh, yeah. You're killing it. <laughs> well, I'm not, I wouldn't say kill. Well, I'm, I'm frugal. Do you have a kitchen? No. <laughs> I have a hot plate. <laughs> 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 yeah. But he was being very funny about it. Mate, yeah. look where your brother lives, mate. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, you know, my brother lives on the house on the hill. And, you know, oh, so the, there's okay. two different worlds. Yeah. For sure. The prince and the pauper. You but know, you're happy, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, because I don't need much to survive. Mm-hmm. I'm more like bare bones. Yeah. If I have a roof over my head, mm-hmm. I need, you know, I need a toilet, obviously. Yeah. Um, and a shower and a roof and then a bed. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. My dad was the same way. Well, it's, it's a nice way to be, honestly. If you don't need much then you're happy with what you have most times. Mm. I was living for a while. I actually, I owned a house in Highland Park, but I had moved out and like, Oh, that's a nice area. Friends. It is. Yeah. It is. I sold it. I wish I still had it. But at any rate, I, my garage was, was converted downstairs to like this weird, it was used for a studio for a while. And like I had moved out. And so my friends were renting my rooms upstairs. And when I moved back in, I was like, I'll just live down here. No bathroom, no plumbing. So I was just like peeing in a fishbowl. <laughs> Real, I mean, yeah, I've, I've <laughs> and I've I was pe- fine with it. I'm honestly. not judging you because I used to, I pee in Gatorade bottles. Yep. So, yeah, I've done it too. Whatever works. Yeah, whatever works. Yeah. Now, how long? Like, are you from? Or are you from that area? Like, where no. are you originally from? I'm. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, so all my family's in Oregon. But for whatever reason, my dad took us to Alaska when we were young. Okay, let's let's get to the Alaska. Yeah, thing. the you Alaska. You brought it up. Yeah, I uh, know. I don't really know many people Most from people Alaska. Don't. Anchorage. <laughs> no south of there so not even anchorage no not even anchorage it was a small town so what is it what was it like living in alaska oh my god alaska we're talking alaska in well the 80s and the 90s but it was so depressing because okay born in oregon moved up to alaska moved back to oregon when i was five and then moved back to alaska when i was nine so i had like a chunk of childhood where i knew Mm. like seasons you know and like regular shit how cold we had a rule um for when my brother and i would walk to where our bus stop was if it got below negative 20 my mom would drive us and let us sit in the car till the bus came but negative 20 and above we were walking to the bus stop i mean i don't (laughs) even i can't even imagine what negative one feels like yeah that's insane. It's fucking bizarre. I mean, do you remember that vampire movie, 30 Days of Night? Yes. Now, okay, so in that movie, is is it like that where there's no sun for ah. like months? Well, so I lived, if you can imagine the state, there's like the chain that runs along Canada, and then there's the chain that runs out into the ocean, and then in the middle, there's a peninsula. Okay. kind of looks like a dick. Okay. That's where I lived. That's, really? <laughs> yes. How many how many occupants in the town? Like, what's what was the population? Like? I want to say when I was living there that it was like four thousand, five thousand. Not much. Not much. Oh my god! Shout out Kenai, Alaska. Ke- <laughs> so how do you spell that? K e n a i. K e n a i. Kenai, Alaska. Kenai. Yeah. Um, did you go to school there? Yeah. So what was your school like? How many students? Like twenty kids or something? Um. Or? Mm, that's a good question. I mean. In, in my class class, like in high school, I remember there being um, a decent amount of kids. Yeah. Like our high school like had hundred, like... Like hundred, like a couple hundred. A couple hundred, yeah. You Nothing know. over that. No. Yeah, just a couple hundred. A couple hundred. What did, what do you, what did ki- kids do for kicks out there? Uh, like, was truly. there a movie theater? Like what? Okay, there was a movie theater in town. Um, cr- crazy enough, our town in the high school had like this really nice auditorium that was built. And I one nice auditorium in the high school. I don't know why there was a, there was a pool too, an indoor pool in the high school. Really? Yeah. 
Like, so y'all had some money there at your, I your mean, school district. It, yeah. I so mean, I was not surprised all too. schools have indoor pools. No, no. But I mean, there was no way to have an outdoor pool. Oh, you had a good, uh, you had good sporting teams. So a good basketball team, uh, water polo team. I don't know. I never cared for sports. I was yeah. like a little punk rocker. So you I were. was like drinking in the woods and being a, a little piece of shit. So that's what you did for kicks? That's what I did for kicks. By yourself? No, with, with friends or like weird older people from town. I probably shouldn't have been hanging out with. <laughs> Um, so how did you, wait, when did you start drinking in high school then? Because that's when I started, like maybe junior, senior year. I think it was high school. I mean, my first drink that I ever had. Go ahead. I want to say I was 12 or 13. And do you remember what it was? It was a shot of, um, Crown Royal. My dad gave it to me because he drinks Can we give a shout out real quick? Shout out Crown Royal. Shout Shout out out my dad. Yeah, for doing that, um. (laughs) Mine was, uh, can I tell you mine? Yeah. Uh, Boone's Strawberry <gasps> Hill. Oh, my God. So there is cheap wine. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, um, we were talking about Boone's recently. What is it actually? Is it Boone's, wine? Is it a liqueur? The like, Boone's is kind of like a like kind of like a wine cooler. Wine cooler. Stra- it tastes like strawberry soda or something. Yeah. But I remember like, they, I remember I, I just, it made me feel warm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting faded. I'm, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, obviously beer. Yeah. And then tomato beer, you know. What the fuck is tomato beer? Oh, beer mixed with like Clamato or V8. Whoa. That was my dad's go-to. Okay. He'd drink that in a McDonald's cup. He would just, wow. yeah. Bloody beers. Bloody beers. Bloody beers. That sounds horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It, it tastes like a like if a tomato soda existed or something. Because you get the carbonation <laughs> from the beer, yeah, and then you're you're you know you're mixing and, it with the tomato. Oh, I love that tomato flavor. Yeah, I love it. I love. <laughs> Was that? Oh, it's called a um. Michelada. Mi- if michelada. you put like the michelada. the little tahini on it, yeah. Oh, can you okay. Write, can you write down michelada? Okay, so it's a michelada. michelada. Okay. So basically, yeah, and then did it. So you met just random people, and then is it some Blair? Was it Blair, some Blair Witch shit or? Blair Witch shit. I'm like, as far as, like, sorta. being out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so the stuff to do in town, like, if you were a little shithead, we were referred to as Scrubs because it was the 90s, I you know? know I know scrub, scrub in the rain, in the rain, on the, on the passenger me. side of a suspense <laughs> ride, trying to holler at me. <laughs> do you remember the, like, the retort song that came out? Oh, no. I don't want no pigeons. No, no. no. Yes. No, oh, really? Yes. Is that TLC? No. Well, TLC oh. was Scrubs, and then... I don't fucking know the name of the yeah, band that yeah. did No Pigeons, but... Okay. But TLC was a they special band, back. but they had a <laughs> shitty deal, I heard. Later on, I saw their oh, VH1. Really? Yeah, they had... They were selling millions of records, but they, they oh, didn't make any money. That's fucked. Yeah. Didn't so, one of them burn their boyfriend's house down or something? Was it, was it, left, a, was left, it left eye? eye? Was it left eye? Yeah. I mean, they were all attractive. They were all yeah, really there's pretty. three, right? Yeah. The, another Since we brought that up... Because you said <laughs> it just kind of like... It just triggered a Yeah. Memory. But uh, SWV... Sisters with voices. Oh, yeah. What was their hit? Um, how that one go? I'm so into you, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, I get weak in the knees. I could hardly speak. I don't weak in the song. Uh, knock me right off of my feet. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, she, they had hits. <laughs> okay. They had about five hits. I, I remember the name, but yeah. like I never was much to the R and B. But there's some yeah. stuff that you just couldn't avoid. Yeah. You but know? you got into punk. Yeah, you so, got into punk like Bad Brains. I was into I was into punk. I was into what I could get to. Dead Kennedys. Dead Kennedys. Yeah. Misfits. Misfits um, for sure. Yeah. A lot of that. Um, and then I got into like weird shit, of course, like Burzum from okay. the Gummo soundtrack. Right, right, and right. And Swans. Okay. Demon of the Lost. You and know, then like, how do you categorize this music? Is it like death metal or? Um, oh, man. Demon of the Lost, I wouldn't know how to categorize. She she has this cr- really crazy like operatic voice. Uh, how do you spell the name of her? D-I-A-M-A-N-D-A. G-A-L-A-S. Is um, that German? Or like, what is that? Sh- I think she's from New Orleans. And the, and then what type of music? You said it's operatic. Her, as well? Yeah, her voice is very operatic. It's it's it goes through different stylings, um, mm-hmm. like more soulful, but it's all like pretty creepy. I would categorize it. 
generally in to the goth category. So okay, okay. I was looking for the word yeah. goth. Goth. Yeah. Okay, goth. Yeah, some goth okay, shit. Yeah. Swans also you, goth shit. Di, um so di, out in the woods again, you would just drink it. Would you guys make a bonfire? Oh fuck yeah. We so, had like a spot <laughs> in the woods on the bluff. So there's the water down here. What's a bluff? A bluff is like um where the land is up higher and then it ends and it drops off and then the beach is down below. And the beach is like really rocky. Right. So we would like cut down trees sometimes. I just thought and- Lost Boys, the movie Lost Boys, <laughs> like something they would do. Very yeah. similar. Okay, but so. You, woods, you, fire, alcohol. That's all woods, you needed. Woods, fire, no tent or. No. So okay, just no pass snacks out. or s- ah. s'mores or. You know what's fucked up is like now I'm I have snacks in my car. <laughs> okay, good for <laughs> like you. I always good bring snacks as a kid. It was just like now we're just drinking. So how way you would just get blitzed out there? Yeah. And so what would you? And then how many people would be out there? Like ten people? Um, yeah, more or less. It really depended. If it was like a party, sometimes it would be at a different location. You know, you get a, need to get a ride from a buddy, and it's like a bigger bonfire and different groups of friends coming out. Yeah, but. My my regular spot with just the homies. Yeah, was that the bluff. Right. Oh, the bluff. Yeah, the bluff. And then talking about creepy stuff, there was another place. Yeah, <laughs> go back just, to the Blair. I like the Blair Witch yeah, stuff. Yeah, go this ahead. This place was called Asbestos. Asbestos. Asbestos, as you can imagine. Yeah. It's this long private road through the woods, and you go to this place, and it was all these, um, like shells of a building you know like oh, all abandoned the, abandoned oh, yeah no. you know covered in graffiti yeah like just perfect place for kids to go be pieces of shit yeah. and explore and stuff and we would go out there and like sometimes have a fire like always drinking and like climbing and like trying to get underneath and on top of things yeah. But then, did your folks know what you guys were up to, or I don't think so? Did you just say we're gonna go to the movies? Yeah, they didn't give us a lot of boundaries. Yeah, how'd you get your liquor then? The older guy, there would be a guy with the ID or something. You just either if if it wasn't like a friend that we knew, sometimes I would just stand outside of the grocery store and be like, "Hey, can you buy me alcohol or cigarettes or whatever?" And then you could keep they could keep the change. Yeah. So yeah, (laughs) it's okay. So it's just like typical from in any town in America that happens. Yeah. Or you have the one homie with the ID. Yeah, like, we didn't oh, have we had that. one. We had one <laughs> homie who had the ID, and, but we had to go to certain liquor stores mm-hmm. where they want. You know, it was like off a dirt road. Oh, for sure. That w- and then the, the the guy didn't. He just wanted the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I could mean, look get the fo- other way. Yeah, we get forties and just down forties. Nice. So there's no marijuana involved. Um, you know there was. I just like sucked at smoking weed when mm-hmm. I was younger. It mm-hmm. gave me like crazy panic attacks it did oh fuck yeah you got but you paranoid I'd, and I'd stuff? still try to smoke it though and like hang out and just sit there and have this like crushing anxiety like i would fixate on like how i was breathing and oh stuff my you know God. Does, does jason smoke he smokes weed all day i don't know how he does how it. does he do his comedy and function like that i don't know some people can just like it evens them out you know yeah like, mellows them for me like i just i'll get snacky and sleepy yeah you know so he, he he gets energy from like yeah. certain sativas or something like no he smokes like indicas mostly indicas it's so yeah, that's, that's that more that's head, a sleepy heady. time oh that's sleep that's yeah, sleepy time that's sleepy time sativa is supposed to be like the more the more uplifted energetic right. one yeah it got me paranoid yeah yeah it got me paranoid highly yeah. paranoid not, yeah not that much fun yeah now um so so we'll get off the last it's just fascinating to me <laughs> so you didn't like. There wasn't a time where you brought out the Ouija board out there or anything. Did you do any oh like stuff God. like that? I did do a haunted thing. Let's Fuck. talk about that. Because like, of course, I watched the craft with my girlfriend. Oh, so explain what the craft was. So that's a nostalgic 90s <laughs> yes, movie. The, the craft with like uh, Feruza Balk. And uh, it's, it's about like teenage girl that moves to a new town. And then uh, she meets these girls that are like s- the spooky goth kids. Right. Yeah. And she's just like kind of a loner outsider. Yeah. But they like absorb her into the group. And then she's like getting drug on this ride where like they're doing magic and they need a fourth to do their magic and oh, the one no. bitch is taking it too far and things what are getting kind of, crazy like what kind of seances and magic were they doing um, were spells they doing, were they mean, doing spells yeah i think they were like you know i remember calling the corners was a scene where they were like all holding hands on the beach and like um 
they were yeah they were doing something out of like a witchcraft book that they had stolen to, so it was to like try the book it was like the book in evil dead there's that one book of the, the dead. necronomicon yeah, yeah the necronomicon <laughs> is that the name of it yeah the necronomicon yeah it was something like that something like that yeah you can't get more creepier than the necronomicon no it like came alive it had a, fa- it had a face yeah on the, okay. um so but was yeah. there were there si- sigils involved with them there were with the yeah. shit that i did no <laughs> okay so what did you do I in just Alaska. straight up tried to talk to ghosts. So there was this house in a neighborhood that was empty. Everybody knew just it was by empty. You and your homie. Yeah, me and a couple friends. Okay, so yeah. what what inspired you? Your there's no Ouija board or like. N- no, we honestly like we would just there wasn't a lot to do, you know, mm. like no internet or like you know, cell one movie or theater, anything. one grocery store, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. just. Small town shit. Mm-hmm. So empty house that you can go fuck around in. Of course, we're going to go fuck around in it. What do you mean empty house? There's uh, empty houses there? This this particular house had something had happened. I did later find out that there was like a murder or maybe a murder-suicide. But it had some <sighs> things left behind in it. Like in the basement, there were all these. There was a basement? There was and a- you <laughs> went down into the basement? Yes. Why did you do that? Because I was That's bored. scary. Why? <laughs> That's scary stuff. There was I like, love it. Continue. Yeah. So canned preserves, like home canned preserves and stuff still all on the shelves. Oh, my God. Not even the creepiest part. Yeah. Um. So you go in and there's like the main level and then you go upstairs to where the bedrooms are. And it was like an A-frame house. So That's you know, scary. Is a creepy house. So it's shaped like a tent, like an A, like yeah. a tent. Yeah, like yeah. a tent. I love that. The aesthetic is cool. Have I love you the have you seen the A frames where they leave part of the wall open in a bedroom so you can like store stuff behind it? No, I'm not an expert on them. <laughs> I just like I know like the basic. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the basic like model. No, yeah, well yeah. that that was the case in this house okay, and A frame, um, but it had a basement. It had a basement and the A frame at the top, and then the wall was open in the bedroom so you could like store stuff where you know the wall was getting little. And there was all this shit back there. There was I'm not fucking joking. Like, if I had long hair and I pulled it back and braided it and put a bow on the end and then cut it off, that was in there. What? Oh, yeah. There was... <laughs> Big old... Hair. A lock cut. of, like, some all lock. of someone's hair. Dude, look at... <laughs> I have goosebumps. Like goosebumps. Dude, that scared me. That was in there. That was a straight-up horror movie. Yeah. Wouldn't that be indication let's leave? There was birth certificates, too, with, like, the baby's foot and the ink stamp on it and, like, Dude, family photos. Red flag number two. Old medical books. What were you doing in it there? It was so creepy. Like, so creepy. And we all sw- swore it was haunted because it just, yeah, it, fe- yeah, it felt did, yeah, like. Just hearing about it did that. You could feel a presence in there. So me and my girlfriends, because of the craft, we were all on the main floor. <laughs> It was like this, like a wooden floor. Yeah. And it was daylight, but still, we're like, okay, let's just talk to the ghosts. We'll all hold hands. And I'm just like making shit up, like, hello, spirits. We are here to talk to you. Show yourselves, you know, come so to us. So you guys were just kind of like riffing. Riffing. Yeah. Okay. Big time riffing. Were but there candles involved or? No. Just, just us. And then you did the just thing holding from the movie. hands. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened? I heard we all fucking heard footsteps upstairs, and we're like, oh, one of our friends is gonna jump out and like be an asshole. They were probably smoking weed up there or something. But we would already went through the whole house, and no one was there. We hear the footsteps, then we hear it. There's a wall here with stairs on the other side of it, and we hear do 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 oh, do do, no. and we're all like still just holding hands and like looking at each other. Those footsteps came around the corner and were just in broad daylight coming Can towards you please stop us. doing that? <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate your... I, I, respe- I respect your story. Please stop doing that. I'm trying to paint the okay, picture okay, here. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that was so scary. I, I would have already been out of the A-frame house mm-hmm. in my bedroom. We ran. I would have... Dude, I would have been out of there. Yeah. We never went <sighs> back after that. But, like, I still had some stuff that I had taken from there for a long time. I think I might still have it somewhere. You like, returned? No, from, like, one of the many times I was there, like, I grabbed a couple things. Why? <laughs> I don't that's know. A, dude, <gasps> that's the main thing you don't do. Because yeah. watch, I've watched enough ghost documentaries. Because that stuff has energy attached to it. I know. What? I know. <laughs> the way 
you don't <gasps> take the belongings from the spot from the dead people house yeah dude yeah. you don't that's the thing you don't do yeah why did you do that i don't know i just you want still it. have items from there i think i do oh. it was like a card you need to sage that stuff i yeah i should probably, I should probably that. burn it what did you take the card just the card a couple cards you have yeah. Uh, dude, that's something you don't do. Is it, yeah. So you did you do? Is this a common thing y'all did on the weekends? Um, I mean, there are only so many abandoned houses. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, abandoned places were like gold dude, for teenagers. Imagine doing the Ouija board in that house. I know. Oh my. I know. <laughs> yeah. What's fucked up is I was raised Christian, so like Me I too. still had all these weird little hangups about like Jesus being real and stuff. Yeah. So I was like still a little scared of like i don't want to fuck with that but i was fucking with it a little bit yeah you know? now do you believe in like obviously other dimensions or fuck I, yeah ghosts and stuff oh yeah right yeah. i do for sure i mean to me that was proof that, that what right happened there. yeah and i had taken my brother and i took our mom there why did you do that prior because we wanted to show her no <laughs> You guys made the wrong decisions. <laughs> Don't take your oh mom God. there. And she said, like, she was up there, like, looking through this stuff with During us. During the daytime. During the daytime. Oh, thank God. Thank God for that. After we left, she told us that, like, she felt something pulling on her pant leg. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> fucked. Uh, yeah. The reason why I get so freaked out is because me and my brother... Uh, we we grew up in a haunted house in no. Poway, yeah. And that the thing you just said, yeah, my because uh, it didn't come out till later because they kept it a secret. They never admitted it, but I had my own experiences where I heard <laughs> like voices. Uh, but my mom later in life said when uh, it was only on one side of the house, okay. But when she uh, parked her car, she said she felt people pulling <gasps> her down like pulling on her I'm leg getting the yeah. chili skin yeah like yeah but um i they uh they try to possess me and my brother what yeah they help yeah and this is you know how you's like well you know the whole church thing i um, you know i was into it too i went to campus crusade for christ mm -hmm. and i went to bible studies in my room i had bible verses on um these uh posters i would write like uh, out of you know Gal Philippians yeah. whatever and <laughs> Ephesians whatever I had verses that, uh, you know, that like meant something uh, to yeah you. I was okay. deep into Bible stuff the whole thing I was yeah. I was into it that didn't that didn't help me no the and there was more than one ghost or entity trying was, to get inside of you yeah because Ooh. and they they held me down what so they held me down and I couldn't I was stuck under the covers and I couldn't I was paralyzed okay it's like you know it's like sleep paralysis yeah possession. Well, i don't know it was beyond that though for me okay and then i heard um from the side i've i've tell, have told this story several times but i i enjoy talking about <laughs> it because it was the scariest day of my life but it was like oh that oh scary it's scary it's you can't move i couldn't move and i was sweating and i was trying to uh yell out jesus uh but oh. i can only get the j and the e out so I was like, G unit? Until I find <laughs> unit. I mean, I don't know. That might have helped me. Something. Yeah, I needed the help. But I finally screamed it out. I had a window where I went, you know, you know, I yelled it out. Jesus. And then it just, happened. it just, yeah. But my brother had the same thing happen to no. him. And he was near the swimming pool, uh, laundry room, the swimming pool. And it, the, the way he got them off of them is he jumped in the swimming pool. Mm, they don't like water. Yeah. So. Okay. So, yeah. So you that's why whenever I hear these things, um, I'm like, yeah. My mom's really sensitive to ghostly spirits. Mm -hmm. She said her house right now in Gilbert, that's the first house ever. She's the, she, it's clear. Hmm. All the other houses she's lived in, there's something. A little something. A little paranormal and ghostly about yeah. these other places. She could feel it. Like yeah. one house in San Diego, this is when I was a kid, she did an open house and she said when she walked in the living room, all the furniture and everything was like in the middle of the room. <gasps> you know, like on like po some poltergeist shit? Yeah. Where it was like, you know, like 
like she watched it move or was it just there uh that i don't know i don't know if she watched it move yeah. but she said the configuration was spo- like just spooky uh-huh and she felt you know she you it's feel more it. of a feeling yeah you could feel it you could feel if something's not right yeah and she's like uh yeah this ain't the one we're moving into oh my god yeah I, so my um one of my friends had a house in glendale okay that was full on haunted and we think it was a woman that lived there like it wasn't necessarily like aggressive but there was a time again i was like creeped out by his house and like just sleeping in the guest room and like i had his pit bull with me because i was like this place is creepy did the pit bull the light it? on uh the yeah the pit bull was looking around because it sounded like i'm not gonna stomp i don't want to scare you but there no, were, no you could stomp no this were, is a, this is another story okay. the other one <laughs> has passed that scared me wrong go shoes too yeah, but it ahead. was high like high heels that's the cadence just yep just walking around the room and the you heard that f- the fucking light was on i was wide awake me and the dog were like what uh, high heels yeah. another time i oh, was wait, there wait, by high myself heels. high heels it sounded like high heels that's a distinct yes sound yes opposed to flat, opposed to the stomping yeah because yeah. i was stomping so in the first like, house tick, tick, tick. yeah more of a ticking on the hard wood clumping oh, around oh no and i was just like oh, this is fucked so what do you think that is do you think when you pass because uh i obsess about this stuff yeah life and death and especially what happens to you when you die of course i feel like when something like those spirits i think they don't want to pass over i feel like there's something unresolved yeah and i feel like i've said this i feel like they're on a loop or something i feel like they're just and, th- and another thing, I don't think they even realize they're dead on no. some Sixth Sense shit. Yeah. Remember Sixth Sense where mm-hmm. Bruce Willis didn't know the whole movie? The whole fucking the movie. The whole movie. Go watch that. That's probably M. Night's top three movies he's done. But yeah. I remember seeing that in the movie theater. And I mean, talk about goosebumps. When Fuck yeah. he realizes that, oh, I'm the person that's dead. Mm-hmm. I think that's there's some reality. There's something real to that where... I don't think those people know they're dead. I don't think they do either. I think it's almost like how we don't really understand time. You know, we see it as being uh, linear because that's how that's how we yeah that's how we process things. Exactly. You know, like we have our clocks and we're born and we go through this process. But of the there's... years of nineteen, this this it's all yeah chronological yeah. and linear. But then if you trip out like on space and think about. Um, a planet far, 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 far away, and if they had a telescope strong enough to see to us, they would actually be seeing dinosaurs. Right. Because of the way light travels. And it's just, there's all these, like, trippy little... interesting, yeah. Yeah. My friend sent me this... I don't know if it's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. (laughs) (laughs) It's a conspiracy. (laughs) He he sent me, and it freaked me out. I'm like, like, dude, I'm like, I don't want to even know about this. Mm -hmm. He, He sent me a thing where... The world really ended. Remember in 2012? Yes. There was, there was a movie about it. He, this is his, the hypothesis is yeah. in 2012, mm-hmm. we all died. But right before the cataclysm or whatever happened, mm-hmm. we got shipped, shifted over to a different parallel universe. Oh. You know, like um the Mandela effect? Yeah. You know how like there's... There's Febreze sim- used to have yeah, two E's exactly. or whatever. So yeah, he thinks like he sent me that, and that scared me. I don't want to think about you know, because that scares me. I would have rather died, <laughs> and t- I, if that really happened, yeah, I'd just just let us die. Then let's go, mm-hmm. on, let's go on to the next thing, seriously. Because that way, if that's true, like a, I'm not shitty, a shitty carbon copy yeah, of where we exactly. are now, it's like on some like, <laughs> like vivarium, some f- where like some false. You know, it's like we're this experiment or something. Yeah. I would have, ra- I mean, I don't want to know that we kind of dodged that bullet. I would have, because that means this is not even real. Like this, right. we're, the, my life is not really like, the reality that I This is my apartment. Yeah, this is not really the apartment. <laughs> There's some missing stickers or something on the wall. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not real. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think about that theory? Like, I do think about that sometimes, though. You're getting stressed out about it. Maybe we shouldn't talk about no, this. No, 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 It's interesting to me. I think that if we talk about it more, it'll make all make sense to me. I yeah. don't think it'll make any more sense, but 
it is an interesting concept that or the Bernstein Bears, how there's the, that's or the, the Ford spelling. logo, like this, like your analogy <laughs> yeah. of the Febreze. Mm-hmm. They they're saying the Ford logo is different than the original, yeah, or the way it was written on the car, like there the are, logo. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are slightly different that we can't really trace back, and then you look at the way that we would trace things back through the internet, and everything does kind of live on the internet at this point. Yeah. And then you look there's at like VR. There's about that, how there's like AI, <laughs> there's AI controlling that. They're really like artificial things, yeah. like tweeting things. and Trip out on this. Yeah. Think about the ocean. Oh, yeah. We don't or, know what's down there. You, oh, you don't. There's so many like sightings from Navy or whatever of like weird objects coming in and out of the ocean. Okay, I like what you're doing because I, I'm hoping you would bring it because because let's let's show our UFO tattoos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's got one there and I got one here. So do you think, I mean, my theory is I think that there's alien bases. In the ocean. At the very. 100%. Why haven't we explored it more? We've explored space more. Do we have the technology to even go as far as the depth? We have to. The impact, the pressure. We can go to space. We can go to the ocean. Because there's some, I feel like Hollywood, they give us hints, right? Because like, you know. Close, close encounters and then the mm-hmm. recently nope you know mm-hmm. and then there's all these you know not only that there's too many uh you know instances of abductees and abductions and what lost the... time and they right. don't remember uh animal mutilation the, the cows and, like what is yeah. that yeah but i think that there we're like maybe uh, you know like uh that movie vivarium where mm-hmm. it's like they're kind of like um we're in an aquarium and they're like just you know what I'm saying? They're just kind of observing us or mm-hmm. something. But there's something. Go back to the ocean. So you, do you think that that's f- too far-fetched, that there's stuff down there? I don't think it's too far-fetched. Like, look at octopuses. Yeah. There's there's so many things in the ocean that are that seem so alien, just in the way that they move and the way that they're made and everything like that. Like, I don't think it's far-fetched to think that maybe there is a species similar to that. Yeah. That is thriving in that environment, you know, mm-hmm. like they had their home planet was similar to, you know, our ocean. Like yeah. super, we're super watery over here, right, but we're right. not using it. Even like they they're always discovering new life down there constantly. Like, like, like fishes or yeah. fish with like fluorescent lights or just mm-hmm. something new that they've never seen. Yeah, trip out on bioluminescence. What's that? Can we give them a that's, shout out? That's the glowing oh, like bioluminescence. The, yeah, like the little the <laughs> angler fish. <laughs> Shout out to bioluminescence. Shout out bioluminescence. Yeah. Um, it's God, crazy. Time is flying by. <laughs> um, I want to get to, I didn't think we'd talk conspiracy. I love it. I love talking about all this. I love um, this. I, I still think that we are like something, before we get off the topic, something just is not sitting right. Something's off about just this life for me. Like the, not my life, but just <laughs> over, like I feel like there's some. Because it's like, we're like, even the stuff that, the current events, let's talk about COVID and, yeah and like Putin and the war out there, there's, it's just crazy. Like, could you even imagine, like, I was tripping out the other day where like, you know, people are kind of still wearing masks, but mm-hmm. like, could you even think, fathom that like, back in the day that there, there there would be a time where everyone's forced to wear these masks no. that there's this virus that spread across the globe you know what i mean it's it like seemed crazy. like something out of a movie that's what i'm saying it totally did like, like the way everything was or folding contagion up. or mm-hmm. something like that fuck yeah but that's our reality it, it is and donald trump was our president at one time you know what i'm saying so bizarre back to the future too biff all the little um Simpsons things that end up happening like right where they predict certain things yeah. and they actually have happened yeah so it's I, very strange I think that the higher ups uh, I mean, I'm going to bring up Hollywood <laughs> but you know I think that they know like I think George Lo- Lucas knows some shit people like Steven Spielberg and I agree I, George Lucas people like that yeah. really up there I think they know some shit for sure they do. Yeah. I don't know if it's the Illuminati per se, but oh, there's no. some Let's, sort of we'll organization. Do that part two, the yeah. <laughs> we'll bring the Illuminati in part two. Um, now let can we just touch upon how did you and Jason link up like oh, how'd y'all like, We met through some mutual friends actually. Um the funny part was I met him while he was still married and like I was with someone else like it wasn't anything romantic or whatever but I was going through a bad breakup and I was staying with my friend and it it just so happened to be my birthday and I was all "Mm." he's like well I'm gonna go watch 
UFC at my friend's house. And I was like, okay, I'll come with you. Yeah. You know, and like. And he was there? He, it was his house. Oh, it was Jason's house. Jason's house. Oh. So I go over here and I'd actually met him once before, like at, at the same mutual friends as Christmas party. Mm-hmm. Just briefly, like meet my friend. He ate a shark's heart once. It's cool. I'm like, that is cool. Thank you for the factoid. Yeah. Back to whatever I was doing. And then, so I'm over there. I watch the fights. His his daughter at the time was maybe like five or six. And she was like, come up to my room and color with me. And so we colored for hours. Oh, and then, you so know. You got along good with her. Got along good with yeah, her. And, and then, then years go by. Years go by. And I'm getting this big tattoo. And my tattoo artist is also friends with him. Mm-hmm. And he keeps telling Can me about we this get, guy. Yeah, let's, give, let's give your tattoo Shout artist. out Grant Cobb. Grant Cobb in the house. Grant Cobb. Dresden Maid also. I can't forget my man, Dresden Maid. Continue. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's getting this big tattoo, and he keeps telling me about, oh, you need to hook up with my friend, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did meet that guy once. And he was, like, going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's not appealing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Going to give that some space. Right, 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 you know? right. That's respect. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, he was at a birthday party with me and like we were talking a lot and hanging out and mm-hmm. you know and like I, I drove him home but then I'm like oh you live in the pool house because they were getting divorced I was like I'm gonna step away from that one right like you know yeah. I made out with him in the car you did just give him a taste Jason. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they were split up. They okay, were like, okay. they were divorced. Did he make the move? He made the move. Um, you know, I can't, I can't remember who did, but I did some like aggressive moves, just what, to like, you did? yeah, because that, that well, you know, he probably did, you know, yeah. Usually it's the the, the man that makes the yeah, but mm. you're like, well, what attracted you to him? His, just his whole vibe. Yeah, the way he carries himself, um, very confidently. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very manly he's and a good skateboarder. He's a good skateboarder. Yeah. I mean, I. Don't follow skateboarding. Yeah, so. but that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, that's cool. He was a but he was a pro athlete, and that's pro skater. That's cool. It's yeah. accomplished. That doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Right. No, right, right, doesn't right. hurt. As long was as he was respectful. Pro. To, he was. Pro for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know we were texting for a while, and I kept like putting him off and putting him off, and I think he finally like got kind of annoyed that with it. Yeah. Like, oh, we're never gonna hang out. Yeah. It was like three months. Oh. And then I finally, you made him wait. yeah, I made him wait. I finally once. He was in his own apartment. I was like, all right, you can take me on a date. Now is the time. Now is the time. And then y'all yeah. just clicked. We did. Wow, yeah. That's crazy. Took him to Jumbo's clown room. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, what it's right off uh, in Thai Town. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Solid place. Yeah. Shout out Jumbo's. Shout out Jumbo's clown <laughs> room in Hollywood. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And then so he, he, he just all got along. And then um, uh, how long ago was that? Um. Well, we've been together together for 10 years now i think wow. so yeah it's been a while what do you what are your thoughts on his comedy career and what do you, he's a kicking ass huh it's great he's like on it he's like he's doing lit- so well he's doing comedy tonight That's <laughs> so he's he's just on it yeah yeah i'm what, really did, proud of him did you see the sh- like when did were you tripping out when he first had an interest in it like, um, were you like uh, he's just going through a fit. Like he, he really loves it. He like, loves it. Like how he did skateboarding back in the day. Yeah. It's like it's it caught his interest. It did. It did. You know what? And the funny part is, he did it for a little while. Like he dabbled for a minute mm-hmm. prior to COVID and everything. But I could tell he was like, you know, I really don't like having to say the same thing over again. Like at that time, he didn't really understand the art of it. Oh. So there came a point. I want to say maybe even during the pandemic that like. He started doing it again and he started understanding the craft more and like getting a routine and like fine tuning and adding little things. And now he's tags. like, he's re- yeah, tags. Yeah. Ta- yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. No, I'm just, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's I've, a- I've dabbled in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not like full fledged, you know, I think he really has a passion for it. He like, does. I respect it. Yeah. But it's like, I, I don't have that passion, passion. Like, yeah. I'm like, I, you know what I mean? La passion. Yeah. But it's hard to do. I can imagine. I thought in my head, I'm like, man, eh, to go up there, but it's like, when there are times when you're, it's not going your way. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is not what I expected. And there's just people <gasps> staring at you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they all have been through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but good for him that he has a passion for it. Yep. Does he write? Yeah, I think. He or is d- it on his head? He does like notes in his phone. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> does the notes in his phone? But um, I think he just ends up memorizing everything because yeah. he doesn't like look at it no, when he it's does just his he set. No, he notes it in his head. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, it's, re- it's really cool. No? no, I'm never having kids. 
No. And then you, he's, he's he has okay. he has kids. So he's a he's Start, got kids. Yeah, starter kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got that. He's <laughs> yeah, got that. He's got that. Yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, oh God, time flew by. Um, it did. We're gonna have to do a part two. I want to do a whole tattoo tour as yeah. well because so there's a great lot going artwork. on. Yeah. Thank great, you. Great, great stuff going on. Um. Now, is there? You mentioned too that you're you're SAG. You're in SAG too. I just yeah. joined SAG. Are you auditioning recently? for theatrical stuff? You know what? It's funny. I I was in um, Mayans season four. Mm-hmm. A friend a friend of mine is real good buddies with the like writer director. Shout out Elgin. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were looking for like a female role f- or female character to play a punk rocker that was like a leader of a street gang of like little shitty squatter kids and my friend was like oh i'm the perfect person Mm -hmm. so i did have to i had to do the self-tape which i'd never done before yeah that's how it is now because of covid you do self-tape so i like went over to a friend's house that that acts and they helped me with it nice so that that was so helpful but the whole experience i fucking loved everything about it like i've been in little things randomly throughout my life that just kind of happened like that yeah but from this experience i was like really um it ignited something in me That's like cool i want to seek it out more yeah yeah now are you taking uh Act classes. I or? haven't. Okay. I haven't yet. That's, okay. That's, that's that's like my next step yeah, that yeah, I need yeah. to do. And then the what? So you do you, a manager? Do you have a manager or, or an agent? Or? I don't have anything at this yeah. point. No. But nowadays, I think because of the internet, can't you just go on LA Casting or submit your I, stuff? to I think people? you can. I think it's helpful to have an agent, though. It helps to like get your foot in yeah. the door a little bit. It helps, but then also you um, even a manager. Yeah. Not even, I would rather have, like, if I was in your shoes, I'd r- want to have, because um, an agency doesn't necessarily mean you're going to book work. That's it's true. It's kind of more like a cattle call. Or, you know what I mean? They, yeah. Uh, if they're looking for Asian guy, they're like, okay, we'll send our 30 Asian guys. Up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, whoever hits, hit, it's kind of like lottery. Mm-hmm. But I think more importantly is I think if you have, ma- like, a manager that's looking out for your best interest, that, that helps. Definitely. That understands you and yeah. what your strengths are or whatever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I know I'm like pigeonholed into like, oh, you need a tattooed person. Yeah. But like, whatever. Finally, right, yeah. that's working in my uh, benefit at this, you know. <laughs> and with that line of work, you it just takes, if you do, if you could just get one thing and it might, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a euphoria type. Yeah. Or y- that can y- really just catapult yeah, you. Yeah, catapult you. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. Now, since, man, time flew by, I wanted to also plug, uh, if you have a website or your Instagram. Or uh-huh. anything, yeah, if you, that, this my, is your time. Yeah. Yep, yep. My Instagram is at Underwear Wolf. Um, my OnlyFans is also at Underwear Wolf. Mm-hmm. Twitter is the same thing, but I don't really use my Twitter mm-hmm. unless I'm like high or watching the fights or something mm-hmm. i didn't right. even know we didn't even bring up only because because i've had other guests where we yeah talked about it. yeah maybe we could talk more extensively well, i always joke around two. like for me to get one <laughs> yeah yeah i always say eh, what if i got what one? if you did um, you know we already kind of talked they uh, i would uh i would probably just sh- do i need to show my butt you don't have to show anything okay yeah <laughs> don't okay you could do I, whatever you want I could, I could just play video games you really could okay yeah all right well i'll look into i don't mm-hmm. know I, i'd rather maybe do the twitch thing yeah that probably would make more sense yeah mm-hmm. uh, I, i'm still thinking about it okay yeah because that's like a full commitment yeah think on yeah. it yeah do you have a moderator by the way i'm sorry we'll get, we'll wrap it up <laughs> do you have a moderator because there's you know you have certain people that you have to have interactions with and mm, i don't i run mine myself so you're constantly, hey, yeah. hey, Brad. Hello. Yeah, the yeah. next post is tomorrow. I'm, or... I'm really bad at it, but a lot of people Have do Have you thought about having it like a, like a social media manager or something like that? that I could... For OnlyFans, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that would help. That could yep. help. Would well, they could deal with that? They can deal with that, yeah. Like you can send them your content and then they can put it up for you. And, and they stuff. could do it. Yes. And then interact with them. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Some people might do that, you know. Yeah. Might I mean, not it, really be talking. To, to make it easy. <laughs> For you, because mm-hmm. that's so many. It's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of with stuff. With the shows, the Jason Ellis show and everything. Yeah. Oh, is that still going on? It's so, yeah. Let's plug oh, yeah. that real quick. Shout out the Jason Ellis show. 
Uh, it's a podcast once a week and page. Oh, I still want to do that. He reached out to me. You to should do that. come on. Can you remind him that I'm still down to do it? Please. I will. I yeah. will for sure. Yeah. And then we have our Patreon too. patreoncom slash Ellis We do two live Jason Ellis shows a week that are two hours long. And then Jason and I do a show together twice a week called Awesome World. It's like an hour long of just us doing awesome whatever. World, is that a podcast? It's also on our Patreon. So it's called Awesome World. Yeah. Just you two. Yeah. And then you guys talk. And is it is it podcasting uh, podcasting format? Uh, podcasting format. Yeah. Okay. We like interact with fans or like sometimes we get them on Zoom and like play games and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Zoom or... is always fun, especially for Patreon. Fuck it's yeah. Exclusive content. It's exclusive. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Dude, yeah. thanks for coming. Thank yeah, you. that was awesome. Um, tell Jason I said hi as well. I will. Tell him that um, when I upgrade to a better <laughs> uh, partner... <laughs> I'll invite it back. Oh, my and God. And I'll have my Ferrari. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna, I'm going to have it cracking. Mm. And then, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, thanks again for tuning uh-huh. in to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. If you want to help support the uh, platform, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. I also do another uh, podcast called Scissor Bro. Scissor Bros. Those episodes drop um, every Friday. Go to youtube.com slash uh scissor bros okay um i also have uh, all my music's at stevieweebybandcamp.com but if you ta- type in q u a n g o u kwangu uh, i have a couple albums on spotify so check that out i also have a p.o box i haven't checked in a while but um it's at if you want to send any packages mail or whatever send all your stuff to uh, th- uh 1425 north cherokee avenue p.o box 1391 la california nine zero zero nine three i want to end it now but it's at 959 and i uh, my ocd don't do is it. going to i have to do it at the 10 or else something might happen A ghost. in the mandela effect <laughs> something might fall on this place or so um yeah and if it, yeah we'll do a part two i mean maybe we'll do a tattoo tour and two. then maybe maybe even bring out Al- uh alice back maybe y'all could do i would love that uh, do it together maybe we could do one where we do a movie i love talking movies movies so with malice is it movies with ma- yeah we could talk about more movies and there you go it's 10 boom <laughs> there you go <laughs>